Hi everybody, today I'm gonna teach you how to create a custom Revit button to write random parameter values. We're going to take a simple vertical facade elements and try to randomize their depth. Hopefully this will create a more interesting loop. To do this, forget about manual methods, let's explore how Python and Revit API can make this task a breeze. And for those of you who will stick around until the end, I'll show you how to create a custom UI like this to gather user input values. Let's get started. So here is my project and then there is this element. It's gonna be called vertical blade and we're gonna be interested in the TFA parameter, which means depth. So if I'm gonna change it to 500, you can see that they become very huge. So we're gonna randomize this parameter across all of these elements. I've already prepared the button right here and you'll be able to find it in YouTube lessons somewhere here. Let's open the code and inside it's same as usual. Some information about the button, our regular imports and a few variables that we're gonna use. Then if I'm gonna scroll down, I prepared blocks for functions and our main where we're gonna write all the code. So same as usual, first of all, I'm gonna write all the steps that we're gonna go through and then we're gonna go and code all of them. First of all, we're gonna write some variables such as minimum, maximum and so on. Then we're gonna get some elements based on their type name or maybe family name. And then lastly, we're gonna just iterate through all the elements and write random parameter values. And in the end, I'm gonna show you how to make very simple UI to get these values from the user. So let's start with variables. So in the beginning, we're gonna hard code all the values. So there are five to six parameters that we're gonna use throughout our code. We will need family name or the type name, depending how you wanna get your elements. Then we need to provide a parameter name, and then we need to write minimum, maximum, and step. And I'm gonna provide my values in centimeters, and then we also need to convert it to feet, but I'm gonna explain it later. Let's go to Revit, select one of these elements, and you can see that the family name and type name is the same vertical blade. And you already know that we are going to modify this parameter called Tife, which in translation means depth. Let's come in here and write parameter name is Tife. And then we're gonna write vertical blade to type and family name. I think that's fine for now. We're gonna come back to it later. Let's go and try to get our elements. To simply get your elements, let's go to learnrevitapi.com, then in block, there's article Revit API get elements by type or family name. Scroll down until you can see reusable functions. And in here, there are four options. The last two I made if you wanna get some types. For example, you have the family name and you wanna get all available types. But for this case, we're gonna use either get all elements of certain type name or get all elements of certain family name. I'm gonna copy both of them and you can decide for yourself which one you wanna use. I'm just gonna come in here, paste it. I'm not gonna modify anything. Then I'm gonna do the same for the family. And now I can see we have these two functions. They are very similar, but the only difference is that we either need to provide the type name or the family name. And also it's important that if you're using Revit 2023 or higher versions, you don't need this last argument true. You just have to remove it here or here, and then it's gonna work just fine. But in my case, I'm using Revit 2021, so I'm gonna leave it here. And you can see it's very easy to use these functions. We either need to provide the family name or the type name, and it's gonna return us matching elements. So let's go down and test it. I'm gonna write in here elements equal get elements by type name. Then we're gonna provide here type name. Or you could also do this elements equal get elements by family name. Then we need to provide the family name. In my case, because these elements have the same family name and type name, and there's only one type, it's gonna return the same elements. But for your case, you can decide whether you wanna use family names or type names. Let's also count how many elements we're actually getting from the first and second method to make sure that we're getting exactly the same elements. So I'm going to Revit, with E of Tutor, I'm gonna click on this button, and you can see two times it returns 72 elements. And if I'm gonna select similar elements, you can see that I have 72 right here. So far it's working good, we're getting the right elements. I'm gonna comment out one of these lines because it doesn't matter which one I use. And now we can iterate through all of these elements and write random values. Since we are going to modify our project, we also need to initiate transaction. We need to use transaction to tell Revit that this change is actually intentional and not accidentally. And it's very easy to create transaction. We're just going to use the class transaction, and we need to provide two arguments, our project and the name of the change. And then we need to start and commit it. And all the changes have to be between these two statements. So let's clear it out and make some space. Now we can iterate through the elements. I'm gonna write for element in elements, and then we're gonna look for the parameter by using lookup method. It takes one argument, which is the parameter name, and we can make an if statement to see if we actually got this parameter. Because if you're gonna provide the wrong name, it's gonna return you none, and you cannot continue working with it. So this way, we're making sure that we actually got the parameter. Then we can get some value, and after that, we can simply just set this value to the parameter. But pay attention here, because I work in centimeters and I want it to be, for example, 100 centimeters. 
So we'll also have to convert it into feed because Revit API works with feed internally. And another thing, we also need to randomize this value because I don't want to change all values to 100. I could just easily make it in UI. I want to make a little bit different values. But before we're going to do this, let's go to Revit and test if we're actually changing this value to 100 feet. Click on the button and you can see it became really huge because I want it to be maybe 100 centimeters, but instead Revit took it as 100 feet. And therefore, I can see in here that I have 3048. Let's undo this and then we can go to the code. Let's make sure that we can convert units from centimeters to internal feet. For this, I'm going to use the function that I shared in my Revit API newsletter. And I'm just going to paste here the link to my newsletter. And in here, there is going to be this code. And if you want to learn more about this function, sign up to my Revit API newsletter. And you can read more about it right here. I'm just going to close it and paste it here. So here is this function. And I'm just going to briefly explain you. It takes three arguments. The first one is the value that we actually want to convert. Then the second one, it asks you, do you want to get internal or you want to get a value from internal? And lastly, it just asks you for units. And in my case, it works with three units. It works with meters, square meters, and centimeters. And in here, there are two versions because there was some changes in Revit API documentation. So there are different methods how to do it before 2022 and after 2022. So now I'm just going to copy it here. I'm going to go down. I'm going to call this value in centimeters. And I'm going to call it value in feet. I'm going to paste it here. We're going to take value in centimeters. Then in this case, we actually want to get internal values. So I'm going to write it true. And lastly, I need to point that units are centimeters. And instead of setting value in centimeters, we're going to set value in feet. Let's go back in here, click on it. And this time you can see that I set my value to actually 100 centimeters. So converting unit works well. So for the next step, let's go back and actually randomize the value. So let's create a function. I'm going to call it random step. And then we need to provide a few arguments. We need minimum, we need maximum, we also need a step. And also pay attention that in here I'm putting underscore in front of my arguments. Because in Python natively, there is a function called minimum and maximum, and you don't want to override them. Then we need to import random module. Then there is a method called random range, which we're going to use. And it takes exactly three arguments. The minimum, then takes the maximum. And in our case, we also want to add plus one because we're using this step. This way we have not the 100, but 101, then 100 is included. And lastly, we're going to provide the step. Let's move this into imports. And now we can use this function. So instead of 100 centimeters, I'm going to write random step. And then we're going to provide, we have the same minimum, we have the same maximum. And then we have the same name for the step. Now let's go to Revit and actually see if this works. I'm going to click on this randomized parameter. And now I can see that my values actually start to change. And now I can click as many times as I want and it will change every time. Also in this case, it's not random enough maybe. So let's provide here 250. And let's see what happens. Click on it. And I can see that we have even more randomness than before. So you can play with the values and see what works for you. So as a bonus step, I promised you that we're going to take all of these values and we're actually going to create very simple graphic interface to ask the user what kind of values should be used. For this, we're actually going to use a class that is existing in Revit Python wrapper. Let's go and have a look. Open Google and type RPV flex for and look for documentation from Revit Python wrapper. Then in here, make sure that you go to RPV UI and in forms, and then we're interested in the flex form. Click on it. And in here, there is an example how to use it. And the best part that RPV is actually included in PyRevit. You don't need to install any modules if you're using PyRevit. You just can write from RPV UI forms and import all the classes that you need. We're going to copy this. I think somewhere here, it shows you example how it's going to look. Let's go to PyCharm. Instead of all of these values, we're just going to create an UI where we can put different values. So I'm going to comment all the way out. We're going to paste it somewhere here. First of all, we need to clean it up. I'm going to explain you quickly how it works. In here, we import different classes that we need to use, right? Then we can create a list of components that have to be used. And it's going to follow exactly the same order. For example, we can see that in here it says label, pick style. Then we're going to provide a combo box, then label, enter name. Then there is a text box, checkbox, separator, and so on. For our case, we're not going to use any combo boxes. We don't need to use label twice. Also, let's put label and this text box on one line because this label and text box are going to be related. Then we don't need any checkbox, and in the end, we actually will need to make a button. I'm going to copy this a few more times, and I'm going to modify it in a second. To create this list of components, we can actually create a form itself. 
by using the flex form class. And inside of it, we're going to provide title and list of components. And now we're going to show it to the user. And we can actually get all the values, but using form.values. This is going to return a dictionary of values. And you can see that the key is going to be the value right here. In my case, it's text box 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And the value is going to be whatever the user is going to provide in the UI. We have an option here to provide a default value. And let's modify this to our liking. Get the right values by default in our UI. I'm going to look here and these are the values that we are going to use. So I'm going to write here type name and the default value is going to be the name that we used before. Then in here, we're going to write parameter name. We're also going to provide the same value. And then I'm going to provide the same value for minimum, maximum and step. We can also make another separator between these two lines. Now we can also modify all the labels. So it's clear for the user what has to be entered. So the first one is going to be elements type name, then parameter name. And then we are going to ask about minimum, maximum and step values in centimeters. Now we have all the components and this is going to create our form. We can change the title to be the same as our button name. And then we need to get all of the values. We're going to write values equals form.values. Since this is a dictionary, we can get all the values by referencing the right keys. Right here you can see all the names of the keys. I'm going to copy all of this in here and now I can reference the dictionary which holds all of the values. Then we need to provide the right key, which is shown right here. We have the type name, parameter name, underscore minimum, maximum and step. And this is supposed to get all the values that are going to be provided by the user in our UI. And also it's important to make these values either a float or an integer. I'm going to write float in front of all of them. And then we can also remove this example. I think that should be enough to create our form. Let's go to Revit, click and see what happens. In here, I get this menu where elements type is vertical blade, parameter name is Tiffe, and then there are default values for minimum, maximum, and step parameters. To make sure that it works, let's also provide some extreme values and see if we are actually getting different results. And you can see that it actually works. And this is how simple it is to create a button to randomize values across your element. Thank you for watching and huge thanks to my supporters on Coffee and Patreon platforms. And if you want to learn more about Revit API, have a look at this playlist, which has plenty of videos that can help you get started with FireRavid and Revit API. My name is Eric Fritz, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy coding!